Hello and welcome to part 8 of my quick socket IO tutorial. Uh, the topic of this part is authentication. Uh, what I'm going to do is build a very simple authentication system for the socket IO application that we've been building throughout this tutorial. So uh, let's start from the server. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the connect event handler receives this environ dictionary as an argument. Uh, this dictionary is formatted according to the WSGI specification and it contains all the details from the client connection request. Uh, so that means that we have access to cookies, uh, to, uh, to any uh, basic authentication uh, arguments, uh, custom headers, uh, standard headers, all of that is in this dictionary. So uh, from, from the information in this dictionary, uh, in most cases, you should be able to uh, authenticate your, your user. Now, the way you authenticate uh, will largely depend on your own application. Uh, on a real-world application, there's going to be a user database, and you will be able to check uh, maybe passwords or API tokens. Um, because I have none of that on this simple application, my authentication logic is going to be simplified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, require the client to pass a username in a custom header. And when, when the username is given, I'm going to allow the connection and then for clients that do not pass a username, I'm going to uh, assume that they are unauthorized and then I'll reject those connections. So let's see uh, here how we can get the username out of a custom header. So this is going to be on the dictionary. And then for custom headers, the whiskey protocol prepends all the headers with the HTTP prefix and then uh, you have the name of the header uh, in all uppercase letters and with dashes converted to underscores. So I'm going to use a x dash username uh, header name. So in this case it's going to be x underscore username and it's going to be all caps. So this is my username and then if the username is not set then I need to stop this connection and the easiest way to do that is to return false from the connection handler so on this connect uh, event handler uh, the, the Python socket IO framework ch checks the return value and if it's false it stops the connection it, it, does, it does not let the, uh, the client in so, uh, so really this is it. Uh, there's another way to reject the connection which involves raising an exception. Uh, you're, you're welcome to check the documentation for Python socket IO if you're interested in that. Uh, the benefit that that option has over this one is that you can provide a, a customized error message that goes out to the client. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it simple here and just uh, return false. So, uh, so there we go, this is our client. So, so now uh, when we connect from, uh, no, this is our server, I'm sorry. When we connect from the client, uh, the connection will be rejected uh, until we add that username. So let's open the client. And before we implement the username, uh, we can see how the connection error is handled. Um, so there is a, connect error um, event handler that is invoked when the connection is rejected by the server. Uh, it receives an error object and here we can uh, we can do for example uh, let's log the error just to see what it looks like. So that is it. So now let's connect and see what we get. So there you go. This is this is an error object. It has a message, and it also shows a stack trace. Uh, this is a stack trace for the client side. Uh, 
if you are not interested in the stack trace, then what we can do is we can just log the message attribute and then now uh, we, we only log the error message. And uh, as I said, this is a, a predefined message from the server that is used when you return false. If you raise an exception, the, the connection rejected error exception, you can provide your own uh, custom message if, if you'd like. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need here in the connection, uh, we need to add that custom header that has the username. So uh, the way to do that is a little bit convoluted. Uh, there is tra transport options. Uh, so so this this uh, this dictionary argument or object argument that I'm passing is used to pa to pass uh, configuration options to the client. So transport options polling, and here we can provide uh, extra headers, and this is where you can put your uh, your custom headers. So here uh, we are going to say x username and here we will have the username. For now let's say uh, we we hard code it just to see how things look like. Uh, so uh, something important that I should mention. You can see that the, uh, the, the extra headers option is under polling. Uh, you, you, you've seen before at, at the beginning of the tutorial that there are two transports. The, the polling mode, which is the default, uh, which we've seen in part one, and then the WebSocket transport, which is uh, more uh, more efficient, and we, we've seen later, I believe, was part three. Uh, so when you connect through WebSocket, there's no way to send custom headers. For some reason, the, the WebSocket specification does not include the ability to send custom uh, custom headers. So these can only be sent uh, when you do a polling connection. So uh, because of the way the Socket IO protocol works, uh, a, uh, a polling connection is established first, and then only then uh, a WebSocket connection is established, and then it takes over the polling connection. So th this works fine. Uh, there's a mode in Socket IO where you can connect directly with WebSocket. If you do that, you will not be able to send custom headers. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's f for that reason. It's usually a good idea to uh, to to let the the protocol work in a, in the default way, which is to start with polling and then upgrade to WebSocket. So this is it. Uh, actually. Uh, now that I think about it, in the in the server, we should we should also log what we're getting so that we can check that everything is okay. So let's add a print there with the uh, with the username. So um, so the client is ready. So now um, let's connect again. And we we got connected, and here you can see that the username was received by the server. Um, so so what, uh, what's left to do here is to replace this hard coded username with uh, with one that we provide. Um, so to to keep things simple, I'm not gonna waste time uh, in implementing a, a login form or or any of that. Uh, I, I'm gonna take a shortcut here so that I can provide a username very easily in the uh, in the URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm going to use the um, the fragment portion of the URL to pass a, a username and this is how I'm going to get it here. So when you write a URL like this you can do uh, from JavaScript location um, hash and this is uh, it's actually to make it more complete it will be window window location hash and this is how you get the uh, the fragment portion if we do 
substring starting from one, we eliminate the hash character, <clears throat> and this is this is the username. So I'm going to use this here as my username. So now, if I want to log in with Miguel, that's how I do it. Uh, so there we go. This is um, this is the simplest uh, user authentication system I could think of to show you how this works.